I've got two pieces from the same client coming up. This one's really ugly. Her other one is has a lot of potential. This one's like, ah, uh, and she knows it. She knows it's not, you know, it doesn't have a lot of character. <laughs> this is it. Very, 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 very plain. She said, just make them cute. It's a challenge and I like a challenge. She wants me to marry both of the pieces. So this piece plus the other one, which is a very Victorian look, like that depression era, uh, Victorian detail on the front. They are nothing alike except that they're antique. That's the uh, that's the only thing that they have in common. And she's gonna use them in the same room. And her home has that farmhouse mod thing going on. I think I'm gonna consider transfers. So what? Not a lot. Like not covered in them. But that's how I think I'm gonna marry them. But this one needs. The other one has a lot of uh, like detail and moldings on it, so I'm gonna add to this one. So I love the knobs, I really, really do. I like them. I could see me doing like all four, like black and white, you know, black, black, white, white with like a Harlequin look on the knob. I think that would look so cool, but I'm not sure it's gonna work with that Victorian era thing. Not real sure what I'm gonna do there, but what I do know that I'm gonna do is add some moldings, which is just in time because y'all know that Dixie Belle is now carrying their own select portion of Would You Been moldings from the Would You Been company that's out of the UK. I've never used these on furniture yet. I've used them on belly. Did y'all see my pregnant bellies? These are the ones that I used on, on sweet little Sarah's belly. You see it? This is flat now. It's flat, but when you heat these, they they you just barely warm them up and they get super soft and kind of like super soft, like crazy soft, but then they harden back up and they're actually made of wood. When you sand them or saw them, they have sawdust. Um, you can paint them, stain them, uh, that you, they're wood, they're like treated like wood, which is crazy because you can make them bend, mold, they don't crack when they dry, um, they're amazing. So I'm gonna just do the top of it. So I'm gonna do it right here. So this is one piece I'm gonna use right here, I love this. This is in stock right now on the Dixie Bell page. This piece I think is like $10. Now, do you see how it looks really flat? It does look flat, but it really isn't. It's not perfectly flat. So they tell us you should, even though it looks flat, you still need to warm it up so that when you put it on, um, once you glue it in place, you want to warm it while it's setting to the piece. You warm it again with your heat gun or your blow dryer and hold it so that it takes the shape of the of the piece, even, even the flat ones, okay? Thinking about doing a center section that I'm gonna make in mold, I still will paint the center of the section differently than the rest of it. So I think whatever I do in the middle here, I will also do on the front of the other little chest drawer. So I'm trying to keep in mind, when you're working on one piece and you, you think you struggle with one piece, when you start trying to make your pieces uh, work together, you have to really think ahead. So you'll see how big these are. So here's this center piece. It's about, about the size of the inside of my hand. And then there's this piece. These are pretty big and it comes as a set like that. And I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's taller, it's as tall as my face basically. So it's a pretty, pretty substantial size piece. I can't really decide how I want this. I think it's going to have to be like this. I like it like that. Okay, I like that. I think that that balances it. I turned it upside down. I didn't think I would want it this way. And I actually think I'm gonna bring these in a little bit. You know how I had them fanned out like that? But I think I need to bring them in because I want it to be more just a center and this knob is kind of in the way. So I definitely like the balance of that. What do y'all think about that? Isn't this fun though? This is so fun. Yeah, I think I like it better like that or maybe not. Oh no, I like that. I like that. That's how I like it, just like that. So I'm getting chalk because I'm just gonna mark a little mark here above and below where I want it to be and left to right, just like that. So that's gonna tell me where I need to put it. Normally I would use wood glue, but tonight I thought I would try something different. So when I was at Hobby Lobby today, E6000 is a glue that I just love. It's a little hard to work with, but I really, really like it. It, that it, does, it is an amazing glue, but they have this called Quick Hold, E6000 Quick Hold. So it says that it sets within minutes, which is really important to me will hold in two to three minutes and reach full cure time in two to six hours. So this is what it looks like. So 
So it is still E6000, but it's quick hold. Now, it's not a wood glue, but E6000 glues everything. And this actually says uh, metal, gla metal, glass, wood, ceramics, and more. So I was fine with it. So I'm going to try that because, you know, why not? I like to try new things. So I thought I would try it with you guys and see. No reason. Wood glue works great. Works great, but uh, tight bond is probably better because it, it sets quicker. Uh, normal wood glue, you know, you have to kind of clamp or clamp or hold. This is my heat gun. I'm not using a blow dryer. I'm just going to turn this on and I'm just going to heat it here from the front side. And All right, I don't need to make this super soft, but I did need to heat it a little bit. So there we go. I'm going to turn it off and we'll heat it again once we put it in. Once we put it in place, I'm going to take my brush and just move this glue around a little bit here. Oh, they aren't kidding. It does really start to dry pretty fast. That might be the reason wood glue might actually be better because this might, this might be too fast. Oh, this stuff though, I'm going to tell y'all it is stinky. All right, so why am I putting this on here now? Because I want to really heat this up, let it soften up, and then press, make sure that I flatten it down. And then it adheres really well, so we'll see. All right, that should be good. I'm just gonna stand here and hold it. You know what it, it feels like when it gets warm in your hand? It feels like a gingerbread cookie. And man, they are not kidding. It like, there's no gap. It, you heat it and it really does go right all the way down, all the way down to the wood. It's very, very flat. So we liked it touching there. So I'm gonna mark up here and I'm gonna just mark some little marks like that so I know where to where to put it I can't get this open do not do that at home <laughs> you know you can use a blow dryer a heat gun I used a blow dryer when I did it on Sarah's belly and you can also have them sitting on oh yeah I can already feel them it's getting that gingerbread feel see you guys look isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. It is crazy. All right, so there's that. I really don't need to heat this up that much because we aren't bending them. We're not going around corners. We're not putting it around the feet of a piece. I had too much glue on there, so that's a learning curve. Too much. Okay, so that is sticking, definitely. I just used too much wood glue. So let's do this one. Oh, I didn't mark this one. Shoot. Okay, we're going to have to eyeball this, y'all. That's the way I do everything anyway, right? That's the way we do things. So, wow, I mean, I really did not use much glue, and we still had a lot that came out. I think that's it, y'all. I think that's, that looks good. So, the, you know, the key is you want to put, get your embellishments on before you start painting, um, and because it just makes them look I just think it looks better than you just paint the whole piece and then you come back and embellish your pieces afterwards. And this is the trim, but I was thinking I would take the trim down and then meet these across the bottom somehow, maybe like that, or you know, take it out like that. Can y'all see that all the way down? And then just use this trim to feed it down. I think that I could do this and just stripe the inside and or do a harlequin or a stripe pattern on the inside, I think that would look really good. And I can leave these knobs and still do harlequin on them even though I'm gonna have this fancy trim on here. I don't know, we'll see. It's gonna be a process for sure. This piece and that other piece side by side, I'm gonna have to have them next to each other and kind of work on them at the same time. But I'm not gonna make any decisions until I get my new transfers, so we'll, we'll see. Thank you so much. Okay guys, y'all have a good night. Love ya, bye.